Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. That did the video today. We're looking at what determines whether it's partly cloudy or whether it's mostly sunny. If you ever thought it was difficult to tell the difference between partly cloudy and mostly sunny, well, you're not alone. Established by the National Weather Service, NWS, according to a loose set of rules, the criteria used to describe different elements of your forecast can get pretty vague. Sky conditions are classified according to how much opaque cloud coverage OCC, is expected that day. While the NWS has apparently not defined opaque clouds, they are presumed to be those that can't be seen through or more technically those that are opaque to terrestrial radiation. To qualify as sunny, there can be no more than 25% OCC. Clear, on the other hand, is sometimes used as a synonym for sunny, but is only applied when there is no more than 5% OCC. Mostly clear, which is also a synonym for sunny, is used when there is between 6% and 25% OCC. Mostly sunny and partly cloudy are apparently interchangeable, and apply when the OCC is between 26% and 50%. Partly sunny and mostly cloudy can also be synonyms when the OCC is between 51% and 69%, although mostly cloudy can be applied for OCC up to 87%. At an OCC of 88% and above, the sky is considered cloudy or overcast. Note that when there is a high probability of precipitation, 60% or more, many weather folks skip the sky condition forecast since it may be assumed to be cloudy. When forecasting the chance of precipitation, the NWS considers the likelihood that there will be at least 0.01 inches of precipitation at one place in the forecast area within usually a 12-hour period, called the probability of precipitation, or POP. Words used in the forecast, such as chance of rain and likely as well as isolated and scattered, are considered either expressions of uncertainty or qualifiers. The last two denote that the entire area will not be affected and they are tied to the ranges of pops. So when the probability of precipitation, pop, is between 60% and 70%, the uncertainty is low, and so the forecast may often include the word likely, while when the pop is only 20%, the uncertainty is higher, so the phrase slight chance may be used. Isolated is used when the pop is between 10% and 29%, while scattered is used when the pop is between 30% and 59%. Occasional, intermittent, and periods of donate a pop of greater than 79%, but also that the precipitation will be on and off. When the forecast temperature is in a given range, it has a particular meaning as well. For example, near 40 means the temperature is expected to be from 38 Fahrenheit to 42 Fahrenheit. Lower 40s denotes anywhere from 40 Fahrenheit to 40 44 Fahrenheit, and mid 40s from 43 Fahrenheit to 47 Fahrenheit, and upper 40s from 46 Fahrenheit to 49 Fahrenheit. Wind terms are tied to specific ranges too, all related to sustained wind speed, SWS, and they can overlap. Sustained wind is defined as the average of observed wind speeds over a two minute period. High, strong, and damaging winds are those expected to have an SWS of at least 40 miles per hour, MPH. Very windy denotes when the SWS is between 30 and 40 miles per hour, and windy between anywhere from 20 to 35 miles per hour. When the SWS is between 15 and 25 miles per hour, breezy is used when the weather is mild, and brisk or blustery are used when it is cold. Calm and light are used to denote SWS of 5 miles per hour or less. Wind chill incorporates considerations of how much heat a human body will lose to the environment on a cold or windy day. Calculations are estimated at weather conditions at 5 feet above ground level, said to be the typical height of a human face, and begin when SWS reaches 3 miles per hour. The NWS provides a chart that shows wind chill for any temperature between 40 Fahrenheit and minus 45 Fahrenheit, with winds between 5 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour, and it reveals that even a slight wind with cold temperatures can have a big effect on wind chill. For example, at zero Fahrenheit, with only calm winds of 5 miles per hour, the wind chill is minus 11 Fahrenheit. Likewise, even when temperatures are relatively mild, say 35 Fahrenheit, if the winds are high, say 60 miles per hour, it can make it feel like about half the temperature it really is, 17 Fahrenheit. On the other hand, the heat index reflects the fact that when the humidity reaches a certain point, the perspiration on your skin can't evaporate, you can't cool down so easily, and so the apparent temperature feels hotter than it actually 
actually is. On that note, the NWS provides a heat index chart as well, which shows temperatures between 80 Fahrenheit and 110 Fahrenheit and relative humidity, RH, between 40% and 100%. Just as with wind chill, slight changes in a single variable can have a dramatic effect, and when both are high, the heat index becomes dangerous to human health. For example, at 90 Fahrenheit and 40% relative humidity, the heat index is only 91 Fahrenheit. But if it's soupy outside, say 95% relative humidity, then the heat index shoots up to 127 Fahrenheit. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do click that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right are a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.